Hello everyone, good evening everyone. Um, I hope you hear me. Can you maybe give me a quick thumbs up if you hear me, if you hear my voice and if you see the picture here, because then I know that you're with me and um, that everybody can hear me. Um, that would be great. Perfect. I see it here. Sound is working. Um, you guys are there too. Hello to Indonesia. Hello to uh, Toronto. Hello to everyone who is joining from basically everywhere around the world. I'm super happy that you're here. I got myself a little drink for our little chat today. And um, actually, I had planned a lot because I wanted to um, connect my camera. I bought a new light. I don't know if you can see that, but um, I bought a new light so you can see me better. But unfortunately, my camera on my last trip broke. So it's still um, at the mechanics so they can fix it. So the, unfortunately, the video is not that much better than it was before, but yeah. Like always, we're working with what we're having here. Yeah, today um, is a special day again, because I'm going to tell you more about my next destination or my recent or my recent destination, because I just came back from this trip. And um, I actually wrote as well down a lot of your questions that you asked. Um, very interesting, those questions, actually, this time. And um, yeah. Let's start this. I as well will, of course, later answer some questions here from the live chat, but maybe you um, wait to ask them until I will tell you because um, otherwise they are too far up and I won't see them um, because now I first want to reveal the next travel destination of the next series that is about to come up here on the channel. And the first episode will already start next Thursday. So I'm super excited about this. And um, yeah, maybe I start in the beginning because this journey was really a pretty difficult birth, as you, if you can say it like this, um, because I was already supposed to go on this journey over Christmas and over New Year's. And I actually flew to this destination. I think it was the 27th of December. And I arrived there at the airport and um, at the moment I arrived, I got a text message from my family that said um, there's like an emergency and that I rather should come home immediately because um, I might not see this person again if I'm not coming home now. So I really basically, I spent one night at this travel destination. Um, I didn't even pick up a motorcycle or like saw a motorcycle. I really just turned around and flew home the next day. And then actually a lot of shit, shit happened. Um, I got Corona in January. It was not so bad, but um, still I got it. So I of course couldn't travel. Um, then I had a wrist tooth wisdom tooth surgery. So I got all four of my wisdom teeth out. And um, yeah, actually the year that didn't start really promising for me, but that's how it sometimes is, that's life. And um, so I couldn't travel basically for the first month of this year. And then finally um, I was kind of back on track and I was able to, um, try again to go on this journey that I already had planned over Christmas and New Year's. And yes, the destination is Oman. And um, I was so excited about this because I have never been to Oman. And um, actually, I, plan I wanted to go there because for me, it was important to go somewhere where it's, of course, warm. Um, I wanted to have a nice climate. I wanted to go somewhere where I have never been before, which is actually not so easy if you have traveled already around the world. So there are not that many destinations, that many destinations left um, that fulfill this. And um, the other thing was I didn't want to fly that long. So I didn't want to fly like to New Zealand or somewhere like this, where you have like just 25 our flights, I wanted to have like a flight of like maximum like six, seven hours. And um, Oman is actually from um, from here, from Switzerland. It's I think like six and a half hours. 
And I flew first to Muscat and then and I got another flight and um, went to Zalala, which is the most like kind of like southern city of Oman. And I started the journey there. And um, I'm actually very excited about showing you this material because I think I have maybe never filmed as nice videos as in Oman. And um, I will as well surprise you next week because the first episode will be very different. Um, because usually, I don't know if you remember the last series, but usually I always posted first um, the trailer and then I started with the first episode. And I now for the Oman decided to not like jump into it right away, but to first make kind of like a summary episode. So the first episode will be like a 20 minute episode about Oman in general and like about the whole experience of Oman. And I think, I don't want to spoil too much, but I think it's the best video that I have posted so far on the channel. I think it turned out very, very nice. And it's not because I did such a good job, but it's actually because Oman is such a beautiful country and I got so many amazing sh sh shots and the nature is just amazing. The locals are so unbelievable friendly and you can really find everything. You find like off-road that is completely crazy. There is the desert, there is the sea. There's, I mean, it's like really everything that the adventure heart wants. And I think that's why it turned out quite good. And I will show you now a little clip. It's only 20 seconds, um, so it's not even a real trailer. But I thought I'm going to show you like this 20 second intro so that you guys get a little feeling for what will be waiting for you. <laughs> So that was the um, intro to the Oman series. Um, <laughs> I really can't wait um, to show you next week. And um, yeah, actually, I got a question from someone um, who wrote the question, which countries would you recommend for someone who has to work and gets maximum two to four weeks off? And um, that question I can't really answer because it depends as well a lot on which time of the year you want to go. But if you want to go like in winter times, I think it's good until like April or so. I think Oman is really a fantastic destination for someone who wants to go two to four weeks. I think I stayed nearly four weeks. And um, I think in two weeks you can really see a lot. Um, I mean, I did as well a lot of like filming and visited places that um, where I spent a little bit more time um, for the videos. But um, I really can't recommend Oman as a travel destination enough. So if you have two to four weeks, I think it's a fantastic place to go. Um, someone asked here, why not the whole Gulf region? Um, I'm actually, yeah, I'm a bit sad about it. I would have as well loved to visit Saudi Arabia and um, see more of um, all the places. But yeah, it was as well a bit a time question and as well a motorcycle question because I actually thought about shipping my motorcycle there, but it was not so easy because at the moment, all shipping and transport is still very complicated because of all the bad things that are happening in the world. And um, it was first very expensive and second, it would have taken very long. So I decided against the shipping to um, Oman or to the Gulf region. And then it's very difficult. I rented a motorcycle there and then it's very difficult to cross country borders and as well to go really far. So that's basically why I stayed in only one country this time yeah so i i'm very happy about it and i um, very excited and you all have to tune in next week because it will be great and yeah we can um jump right into the questions um i already got a lot of questions from you guys and i thought there's like one um part that was mentioned so often that i would spend a little bit time 
on explaining things um, for this kind of sort of questions that can, came in. And that were actually questions about navigation. So I got so many different questions about navigating. Um, how do I plan my routes? Which software do I use? Which GPX do I use? How do I map my things? How do I find the best roads? And I will try to answer a few of those. Um, I might as well at one point do a video about it because um, there are lots of things that I could easier show while doing them if I, for example, could take screenshots of my computer. Um, for example, if I, I often use Google Maps and satellite to see like spots that maybe are not roads, and I think that's easier to explain, but I will try to explain a little bit. So someone asked, um, when you plan a route or a trip, how do you decide what roads to take and what places to see? And um, I basically start with looking at my own Google maps because i will show that to you guys now um because i mean i have been traveling for a very long time i'm following a lot of travelers and it's kind of my job as well to um, know about the best places and find the best destinations so um, i of course i'm always very alert about um, destinations cool places to visit and especially beautiful nature so whenever i see something somewhere no matter if it's in a newspaper or on instagram or from some other fellow travelers i save it on my google maps or as well when i traveled somewhere and i like the places i save it too and um, i'm gonna show you now how my google maps looks like on my phone and i'm gonna show you here europe and especially south africa it looks like, I don't know if you can see it, yeah, it looks like this. So you see here South Africa has a lot of these favorite and hearts already, and I have never actually been to South Africa. So um, this is all places that I basically want to go to. And um, that's basically as well where I start. I look at my map where I already saved a lot of things. And there are often already like regions where I know I have to go there because I already like have so many places there I want to visit. And then when I know I go to a destination like Oman, for example, I actually start like most people start. I sometimes really buy guidebooks because I think they're giving a good overview. And I'm normally, I mean, I'm not taking them with me normally because I find them kind of heavy and they're additional luggage. But for me, they always like are a good overview in the beginning, especially, um, I mean, all these guidebooks are normally like, um, they have like this, they're sorted by region, organized by regions. And um, for example, in Oman, it just um, by reading like the overviews of the regions, I got like a feeling of which regions I really want to go to. And that's often my second step. And then I actually, and that's as well for navigating, I mostly buy, ooh, I mostly buy still paper maps actually, because in the beginning I find it sometimes easier, especially when I read things, I find it easier to um, mark things on the paper maps because there you then really see, because I sometimes feel like Google Maps, especially because I saved so many like favorite things there already. And sometimes you as well don't see roads so good on Google Maps. I then often feel like for like organizing the routes, it's pretty difficult. And yes, then um, I basically know like where I roughly want to go. And normally like on this Oman trip, I as well know how much time I want to spend in the country in total. In Oman, I actually, I flew there and I didn't um, have a flight back in the beginning because I wanted to stay a bit open and see how much time I really need. And um, yeah, I only booked my flight back when I was, I think, there for on the second week or something like that, because then I felt like, okay, I need like two more weeks and that feels good. And um, yeah, so that's basically how I go. And then I know how long I want to go. And according to that, I decide 
my route a little bit, but I never pre-plan my route. So I'm not doing any like base camp or any GPX or like navigation planning before, because that I feel like limits me way too much. So I only know like kind of like, okay, I have like so many days to spend in this area, so many days to spend in this area. And then I really just go more or less. And um, every morning or every evening, more every evening, actually, um, I look at the map again and I decide where do I want to go tomorrow or what do I want to see on the way. And um, then I just go. And sometimes you as well then realize you need much more time at some places that you didn't expect before. And um, I take that time then. And sometimes then um, I realize, wow, I spent so much time now at these places. For example, when, when my travel partner joined me, by the way, for the first eight days in Oman. And um, when we were riding up the coast, it took us much longer than we expected because it was absolutely stunning. And I had to stop so often to take videos and um, we got much slower. And at one point we realized, wow, we have to really hurry up a little bit and um, then really drove more the next day when we realized, okay, we have to get going now. Otherwise, we're going to be here for the next two months. And yeah, that's basically how I plan and um, how I ride. There is not so much pre-planning um, that is done. So I'm as well not using any software where I pre-plan routes, but someone as well asked, what apps do you use? And um, yeah, I use normally, I didn't do that in Oman because the rental bikes didn't have a GPS holder, but um, normally I have like my GPS on my bike because I just like to put like the next destination in there where I go to see the road and um, to get like an overview of the length of the distance. And um, then I as well always have, of course, my phone with me. I have the paper maps. I, while traveling, I don't look so often at them anymore, I have to admit. Um, but at my phone, I use, of course, Google Maps a little bit, especially in cities or in places that are very well mapped. But I as well use an app that's called My Maps. And I use another app um, that I actually use even more often. I'm going to show you this. Um, that's called, oh no, I can't, can't show it to you really. It's called OSM and Maps. And that is actually really good because you can as well, I'm just going to show you that you can as well import, um, oh, can I see this? Um, you can import like routes and GPX files. So if you find like files somewhere or routes somewhere online, um, you can import them and um, navigate after them. And here is my Oman route. And yeah, so that's very convenient that you can import those things. And you can as well, which is very important, um, you can download the maps before you go to the country. So even if you don't have any Wi-Fi or even if you are in areas with no cell phone connection, um, you can still open the maps, which I think is very important. So that's the two maps that I actually, or two apps yeah, that I actually use on my phone. There is a question, what GPS do you use? That is a good question. I have actually different ones. On my Tenere, I have a very, very old GPS. It's still the GPS um, from Garmin. It's only Garmin because it's very important with the GPS to have one where you can put in SD cards um, with OpenStreetMaps OSM because otherwise there are many countries um, where there are no proper maps that you can buy from the GPS providers. So you really need to have a navigation system, a GPS, where you can put in these SD cards to um, be able to use it as well, for example, in West Africa or places where you can't buy any maps from the GPS company. And I have one that's, I think, called Zumo. Oh, God, I don't even know, 594. No, I think it's even 395. It's from 2016. And in 2016, it was already so old that I got it for a cheap price. So I think it might be from probably was released sometimes in like 2012 or 13. And it's still going strong. And um, now it's on my Tenere. 
And um, on my American Tannery, I actually have a different one that I bought last year that is a little bit more modern and a little bit more like the people of you who have BMWs. There's like this BMW Navigator and this is kind of like the same, same thing all from Garmin. Yeah. And um, so much to the navigation. Um, I think at one point I will really make a video out of this because um, it's also very interesting how different people navigate. And um, I think I got very good actually in spotting good places and I have like several techniques how I do that. And it's really a little bit like, you know, because I often as well go to places that are not like in any travel guides and or I'm like so places and I they are not I don't know where exactly they are so I really use a lot of like you know satellite and um, Google Maps with satellite images to uh, see how the roads are and to see where they lead and um, to see what's going on there so yeah that's um, actually very interesting um here are already uh, a lot of questions um i have actually one question for you all guys um because i thought and i already wanted to ask that last time um because i wanted to ask you guys which channels do you guys like and you can comment here uh, in the chat or you can also comment later um, if you watch the chat because I actually um, find it very interesting what else you are watching and of course there are like the big channels like Itchy Boots or On Her Bike from Kinga um, who everybody probably knows but maybe you guys have as well like some tips and some channels that you really love that are not as popular and um, I think every now and then it would be cool if you um, if we just like talk about those or write those down so maybe more people can as well um, explore this not so famous channels or new you new youtubers because I think that is um, very nice to as well like support channels that are not that big yet. And um, I have one channel that I want to recommend to you guys. Um, it's actually a German channel. So if you're not speaking German, it's maybe not for you. But um, one channel I really like, it's called Adventurist. And um, I will write it down here too in the, in the comments. And um, they're two very nice, people from Germany and unfortunately they only make German videos so far but if you're a German I can highly recommend their channel yeah and um, I will later look what you guys um, told me here in the comments and check out all the channels that you talked about yeah of course itchy boots I see here I see here Nico from ride me five I know that channel very well too and yeah, here's now what channel Gene Travel. Yeah, actually, whatever you like. I mean, maybe not gaming. That's not so, that doesn't interest, I think, this community too much. So, in the widest sense, travel and great filming and um, nature and yeah, whatever you really think is like good produced stuff. Um, I, for example, recently watched a lot um, a channel from a guy that's called, I don't know him personally. Um, fearless and far and he went to so many cool places in Africa um, he did such a unbelievable interesting trip to Congo and through Congo where he was like people thought in a village that he's a spy and then he had to travel with a motorcycle on the back of like a guide that he was with um, through the jungle um, they ate the crocodile that um, they were kind of like bringing and completely crazy story so that I can highly recommend too. Yeah, cool. I see already a lot of um, suggestions coming in here. That makes me very happy. I will look at those later. So um, I got so many questions. Now I'm as well open for your questions here in the chat. So if you want to ask something, um, just feel free, drop it down here. And um, yeah, I see that the first question already, Leah, which is your favorite adventure bike? And um, actually that question someone else asked me too, 
who basically asked me, um, does rate really matter? Um, Tenere versus GS1200 versus Tiger. How would you rate the different bikes you've ridden? Um, if you're going for a new adventure, which bike would be your preferred one? And that actually is an easy question to answer for me because I'm still team Tenere. I really love the Yamaha T7. I think for me, it's the perfect motorcycle to travel with. In Oman, um, we actually had a Tenere and an Africa Twin. My travel partner drove the Africa Twin. And when he left, I actually thought about changing to his Africa Twin because the Africa Twin had a better luggage. But I got then so used to the Tenere again that when he left, I didn't want to change bikes anymore and stayed with my Tenere, even though he didn't have the Tenere didn't have any great luggage systems. And um, for me, the question is as well not so easy to answer because I think it depends a lot on where you're riding. So if I would, I would like to have many motorcycles. If I would um, have like the choice, I would get like a um, GS1200 that I would mainly ride like here in Europe and in the Alps. I think it's a fantastic bike to ride, for example, like to all these Alpine passes. It's a very good bike to um, go on for me to go on like easier gravel roads because it's much more heavy than a tannery of course and yeah it's not a bad bike so i would have it like here for europe um then the tannery for travel and actually i would more tend in the triumph tiger i mean it's kind of like in between from weight and actually the longer i ride the more i tend to even go less weight so I think I would, would be more tempted to size down for my tannery than to size up. So I would, if I would go like on a road trip again, I would more think about, I mean, I probably would take the tannery because I think it's a pretty good bike, but I would more think about maybe taking a lighter bike, smaller bike than taking a GS. So that's my decision or a Tiger. So everything that is more heavy than my tannery is basically out for me for traveling um yeah so let's see what else you guys are asking would you do a do with itchy boots um I, we actually tried to meet several times but unfortunately our ways were always like this i hope at one point there will be the opportunity did you really enjoy riding through India? I actually did. I love India. I think it's such an amazing country. Um, it's a very interesting country as well. I have to admit, I was the first time I was in India was not with a motorcycle. Um, I was backpacking there when I was still a student and had no money whatsoever and only slept in the shittiest places you can imagine. And um, I was actually pretty intimidated by India then because I found it so busy and as well, if you stay like super, super low budget, you will see places that can sometimes not be that nice. And yeah, I my first impression was kind of like, wow, I didn't expect that. So I was very curious how it would be when I came back on my world trip. And I was as well a little, little bit scared because I knew that it's so busy and I was a bit scared of the traffic. But um, then when I came to India, I absolutely loved it. And I hope that I can go back there um, soon or maybe next year because I think it's such a great country to travel to. And it's I think it's as well so different than everything else in the world. Um, yeah, it's completely craziness. Um, someone is asking, do you share your trip tracks as GPX files? Actually, guys, I am, that's another um, big thing. I'm working on this currently. Um, as, you, as I said before, I'm not pre-planning my trips. So um, I have no GPX files that are already like ready. And um, but I actually hired someone who is helping me to really set them up um, to put the points of interest in them that I want to show you. And I will as well make some little travel guides um, that you then can get on my website in the future. But it will take a little bit longer, but I hope that still this year 
I will publish all of that on my website. So you, if you, for example, want to go to North Cape or to Oman, um, you can just get the routes there. And now I'm planning are the GPX files of and travel guides as well of North Cape, of the Scandinavia trip, Expedition North, it's called here on the channel. Um, Oman will be one and the cross-country United States trip. That will be the first GPX um, files that I'm working on and as well the first travel guides that I did. Um, how many languages do you speak? Unfortunately, I don't speak so many languages. I speak German, I speak English, I speak minimum French, but I understand more than I speak, unfortunately. I, in, every, in a lot of languages, I speak a few words. So if I go to Spanish-speaking countries, I can order some food and ask about the road conditions, but I'm not fluent or could have a conversation. So it's a bit intimate, it's a bit, um, it's, I could speak more. I think I once learned Rus Russian um, in, in university, but actually I don't speak it. I only can read the Cyrillic um, language, but yeah, I wish I would speak more, but I'm trying to speak with hand and feet and communicate with all ways. So that works mostly out very fine. Um, would you do paid guided tours? Actually, I was thinking about offering some tours too, where people could join. Um, I have not yet figured out if there would be enough people who are really interested in that. And um, I actually think it's a lot of work and a lot of responsibility. I maybe would do in the future some tours that you can join, um, but more like here in the Alps region, um, because that's of course easier for me. And yeah, it's as well a beautiful place to visit. And it's basically a very, I mean, it's basically a, it's a nice area. And um, I think many people as well would like to ride here. So yeah, maybe that could be a future thing, but it's not planned yet. And um, it's just talking. So we will see if that is happening. Someone, by the way, as well, um, sent me a message. I'm um, talking about the um, GPX file. Someone sent me a question, which are my top three things that I would um, visit on the North Cape journey, because he doesn't have as much time as me. And I think these travel guides that I will offer to you guys will be very good, because normally, I mean, if you read guidebooks, you know how that goes. They are that thick, and um, you feel like, well, everything is important and everything sounds great. And um, this travel guide that I'm going to make is kind of like breaking down everything. So you don't have as many things in there anyways as this. And then you as well can kind of like decide like, okay, I'm not that interested in visiting a husky farm or I'm not that interesting in do a that specific like ocean road. I rather would like to spend more time here. So I think if you have a more compact version, it's as well much easier for you to narrow down which destinations you want to see if you have not as much time as I did on this journey. Oh, who, what or who inspired you to start motorcycle traveling? Um, actually, I always wanted to ride a motorcycle and it, I think it was actually my dad. If I would have known that this question comes, I would have um, gotten a picture for you guys because my dad was riding a motorcycle not, when, not anymore when I was born because he stopped when my brother and me um, were born. But he was uh, riding a motorcycle many, many years when he was younger. And he actually went to Australia in the 70s and drove around and through Australia two times in the 70s, which I find pretty cool. And of course, I saw these pictures and it looked amazing. And yeah, I think that really inspired me to ride a motorcycle. Um, got to go Alps would be a assumed, yeah. So do you have an idea for your next tour? I actually do, but I will not tell you now. And um, I'm actually a little not, I'm not stressed, but um, this new tour will start very, very soon. So I hope I will be able to keep up the editing and the publishing of the Oman series um, with one a week. 
Um, if this will not work out, I will let you know, of course, before, um, because I'm a bit worried that as soon as I start traveling again, I might like a little get like a little bit behind and not be able to edit all the new episodes in time. But I, of course, will try. And I'm, I hope that it will work out. Um, Space Cowboy is asking, have you any plans for a 100,000K special? And I'm we are so close to 100,000 followers here. And I was actually thinking, I mean, the whole plan was like to make a live chat when I reached the 100,000. But now I'm doing a live chat now and I think, the 100,000 probably, hopefully, will really be in like maybe like two weeks or three weeks. Tell all your buddies uh, to subscribe to the channel, then it will be even earlier. So I don't know if we want to do another live chat then. If you guys have any ideas what you would like to do for 100,000, um, let me know. Maybe we can make it reality. <laughs> Just um, drop a comment here. Um, someone is asking what hearing protection are you using? I'm, I actually normally use only, I have this earphone, headphones, earphones, in ears that are called, the brand is called Shuri and they are noise isolating. So if you put them in, they have like this little foam thing in the front. They are basically like earplugs and I always write with them even if I don't listen to music because they protect my ears. I actually got one question that I would like to answer because it's another question that I actually wanted to ask you guys. And um, that question was, where is that? I oh, am yeah, here. I have it all written down here. What would be your favorite, what would be your own favorite question? And what would the answer be? And I think that's a very interesting question. And actually, there is only one question that I really have, but I have no answer to that. And maybe you guys have the answer to that. And um, that question is, why are 95% of people who complain about something on this channel German? It is so honey and um, whenever someone complains and mostly it's complaints about a language and my my german accent it is german people it is so funny and i don't know why it is it's literally that whenever someone complains i know like one two three is he german yes <laughs> and maybe it's just the german mentality to complain more, but then you would think that your own countrymen are kind of like supportive, but I guess that's not the case. So guys, if you know why that's the case, and by the way, it's not all German followers. I have so many nice German followers here that I um, see here, but um, if someone complains, it's mostly the German. Yeah, someone here says too, the German mentality it is. I actually, I actually don't know. Um, yeah, I got so many mean comments about my accent that said like, you should go to a language school, your accent is horrible, how can you even speak like this? Are you not completely ashamed posting videos with such a quality? And so on and so on and so on. But that's literally, that's nothing I can do something about. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, another question was, do you have any philosophy for life and have you always been very clear on your goals in life? Um, I think that's a very interesting question too, because I think goals in life change a lot. And I as well think that if you like reach one goal in your life, people as well tend always to think like, ah, oh, if I could only reach this one goal, I'm going to be happy. But then you reach this goal and eventually you're going to find a new goal. And um, so actually, I think my goals in life changed a lot. When I was younger, I always thought I'm going to make a big career. I'm going to earn a lot of money. And then, of course, at one point in your life, you maybe realize that money is not that important, uh, that you rather would like to have the freedom to see a lot of things and to experience a lot of things. And yeah, of course, money is important in the sense of that it as well gives you the freedom to experience those things and live this life that you want to live, 
but um, it's not everything and um, that you maybe or I in my case prefer to uh, know that I earn less money if I I mean I do earn much less money than as if I would like sit in a nine to five office job where I would have like a decent income that comes every month and um, now I'm self-employed I always have like the struggle to really get the income coming um, it's of course always as well a risk to be self-employed so it's I mean it's it's nice because you can do with your time whatever you like, but it's of course a challenge as well. And that's kind of like how your goals change. Now it's more like that I really want to be self-employed because that gives me the freedom to say, okay, I can travel about like four months a year and the other months I'm at home and I'm trying to earn enough money to go then on trips again. Um, yeah. Oh, you guys are so nice, saying so nice things about my accents and um, that you don't find it that terrible at all. Um, here someone writes, your travel partner seems to rush you sometimes, <laughs> laughing out loud. Um, actually, I mean, he's no, that's very funny. That might maybe give you an impression because I'm so sometimes saying bad things about him but he's actually a very, very patient person. So, I mean, he literally, he's not, I mean, I know that many other people who travel like together, that then people are as well helping with filming and with doing videos. And he sometimes does it when I say like, can you please hold the camera? But he's not involved whatsoever in the filming for YouTube because he has just no technical understanding for cameras and things like this. And is as well not interested in it, in it at all. So um, everything that you see from the drone flights and so on is filmed by myself. And um, he is, but he's never really rushing me. Um, when I say like, oh, I want to film here more. I want to stop here for an hour. He's like the easiest person. It's just saying, like, yeah, you do your stuff. I, I'm sitting down and smoking a lot of cigarettes. And um, the only thing that he is rushing is sightseeing because he hates sightseeing. So yes, that's... Um, sometimes a problem because I still like the culture but you will see that in the Oman series um, in the beginning I didn't do so much sightseeing and then when I was alone I did a lot of nice cultural things that were as well combined with writing but um, I just spent like more time at local markets and looked at some old forts and stuff like that I know um, for some of you that might, might sound boring too but I as well really enjoy the cultural part of traveling. Um, so, oh, it's the, someone is asking, um, would you, would you get a neck pain after wearing GoPro in the helmet? Actually, no, but I think that's just why I put the, I have the GoPro here on my chin. And, um, I, by the way, really like this perspective and you can still see a little bit of the front of the bike because it more give, gives you more the feeling that you're really like on the bike and not just like flying over the road. Um, so I do that on purpose because some people um, complain about that as well, that they don't like this perspective where you see parts of the motorcycle. But I really liked it. And um, I have it on my chin for having this perspective and having a little bit of the bike on it. And actually having it on a chin makes a big difference before, before I had it here on my head. And somehow on the head, the weight distribution is much worse. While having it on the chin, the weight is much more like down here. And um, it doesn't bother me that much as, at all. And I guess I'm meanwhile as well very, very used to it. Um, <laughs> hate sightseeing that's what it's all about and um, I don't know I think there are very different approaches to traveling um, for some people it's the sightseeing and for some people it's like only the riding and uh, I think my travel partner is like nature and riding I mean nature he's very happy with if, um, to go to nice places and that have a amazing view and and that are stunning, but like old forts or churches or mosques is not his thing. Um, how experienced, how much experience should you should you have on riding before going on those amazing trips? 
I mean, when I went on my world trip, I basically didn't have any experience riding. And maybe that was as well a bit naive to say, okay, let's go without that much experience at all. But then that's part of the adventure too. So I really think you don't necessarily need that much experience. I would say though, if you want to ride off-road, it completely makes sense to take like one or the other off-road class just to get a bit more comfortable on your bike and as well get like a few techniques. I really as well think that you can then learn a lot by just doing it. But if you have if you have no clue about like that you should, I met once two travelers who as well, like me basically went on this world trip on their own world trip without um, any preparation. And when I met them, they were like, what? You are standing up and you're riding off-road. And I was like, yeah, of course. And um, they were so amazed by that because they had no clue that you could like stand up on your motorcycle and that it would help you when you ride off-road. And I found it so funny. So it's really, I mean, and that was in Tajikistan, by the way. So that was really far off from everywhere. And um that shows, I think, that I mean, you can go to basically all places without any ex prior experience, but it of course helps and it as well will help you to stay out of trouble. Um, one or two got to go stickers, which took my tenor very well, along the other YouTube stickers. Um, I'm working on that as well. I hope that comes um, as soon as I have my website done new, and I hope that comes as soon as I will put like all these um, GPX tracks through tracks online, then hopefully you can get a few got to go stickers too. Um, when do you wear the neck brace and when not? Um, I mostly wear it all the time. I think I didn't wear it for, I sometimes don't wear it if I'm traveling here in Europe because I forget it. And um, sometimes I don't wear it if I have a lot of stuff on, on. Because then it gets like, if I have like, for example, on this Expedition North journey, I just had so massive jackets on sometimes because it was so cold and so much stuff under it, that then if you, I had like a neck brace on in addition, I just felt like I could not move anywhere anymore at all. And um, yeah, it's crazy. Here someone is asking, which drone do you use? Yeah, the follow me drones seem to go over 249 grams. So um, I am using, normally I'm using the Mavic, Mavic 2 Zoom. Yeah, DJI Mavic 2 Zoom it's called. And um, it's a pretty good drone, but um, I rarely use the follow me road because um, follow me um, option because I hate that. So if I'm traveling with my travel partner, I will send him riding and I will swim with a drone. And if I'm alone, I sometimes try to find other motorcyclists with a bit busy road to ride. Um, or, I mean, if I have no other choice, that's, then I use this follow me um, mode. And now actually on the Oman series, I only had the DJI Mini because in Oman, it's a very gray zone. You're not really allowed to have drones. You're not have, allowed to have big drones. You're kind of allowed, allowed to have drones that are under 250 grams, which the DJI Mini is. And, um, but there are as well some other legal things. So it was not, I mean, it was not illegal, but it was as well not 100% legal. But I didn't want to take my big drone because I was worried that I, they would um, just keep it at the airport when entering. And um, so I decided to get this. DJI Mini, and you will see that the drone, I think actually the drone pictures turned out quite nice, but the quality, if you like zoom in close, is not as sharp by far like the one of my other drone. But um, I think better, better little drone than no drone at all. Yeah, the DJI Mini. I don't know. I mean, I found it as well. It's kind of flimsy. So the only the biggest problem I had with it was actually when it was a bit windy, it was very sensitive to wind. So with the big one, you can still fly it while it's kind of like a little bit windy and it would still be stable. And the small one is just kind of like, I mean, of course, it's it's like half, it's not it's even less than half the weight um, of the big drone. So it's of course much less stable. 
Um, I got another question um, today in an email. I don't even know if this person is watching here, but I just thought I'm going to answer it here because um, I think it's still an interesting question. This person was asking me um, how I transport my money while traveling and where I get my money. And um, actually, in the beginning, when I was on my world trip, I had like secret, secret pockets um, that I kind of like had and secret little things that I had in my luggage. I actually don't do that so much anymore. I um, usually have like my normal wallet um, with my credit cards. And then I normally have like one spot somewhere else in my luggage where I put a little bit of cash. And I always bring enough cash, like at least a thousand euros um, or a thousand dollars cash um so if something happens if you have some cash handy and um otherwise i actually normally don't i mean it depends really where you go um but i normally don't really exchange money before and if you go to a country like oman um, where you can just use normal credit cards i would just fly in there um go to the first atm at the airport and just withdraw um, money with my credit card um, I looked for a credit card institute um, that has very good rates um, when um, withdrawing money in foreign countries. Actually, my credit card um, that I have, the withdrawal is free in many, many countries that I go to. But there are as well other countries like, for example, Iran, where you can't, I mean, you can't use your credit cards. And um, then you have to really then come with all the cash um, that you're going to need um, for the time being there. And uh, that's, I think, always a little bit of a challenge because um, you need to calculate a little bit how much you really bring. And then it feels, of course, super weird to walk around with so much cash on you. But um, that's just how it is. Luckily, countries like Iran are normally super, super safe. Um, which is your dream bike? I'm very lucky because I'm driving my dream bike at the moment. Um, I really would not travel on anything else than the Yamaha Tenere. Someone is asking, will you keep on traveling and how long? I don't know. I hope for a very long time. I think maybe my travels at one point might change. You never know what happens in life. Um, you never know how your personal life will change. But I think I will always travel somehow. I mean, if I would not travel on a motorcycle, I would hopefully travel in a car. When, whenever I'm in countries like Oman, um, they had so many Toyota Land Cruisers there. And I think it's such a cool car and it's everywhere in the world. And I'm always um, getting a bit envious when I see people who are like in these kind of like overlanding cars and have rooftop tents and are super equipped. So I really could imagine to at one point as well try that out. Um, maybe a dream would be like to have an overlanding car that has like a motorcycle in the back that you can just put down then because I think you're even more independent if you have a car than with a motorcycle. And someone is asking me here, are you going to upgrade to the T7 Rally with a bigger tank range? That actually fits to another question I got. Someone asked me, how do you manage autonomy with the 16 liters tank of the Tenere? And I have to admit, I find that question very interesting because I think people are always completely crazy about um, having like this huge tanks and um, a lot of liters to put into the bike. And I'm actually... I mean, I'm just not so keen about that or I just don't care so much about it because my experience is that there are really not many regions in the world where you need such big tanks. I mean, I have been in so many places of the world and there were, I think I can count them in one hand. There was like Mauritania was one of those places where we had to, and I carry always um, normally on my travel itinerary that I have here. I have the um, tank and then I have like the canisters that I carry where I can in addition add nine liters. 
And that I only fill up when I need it. So normally I just carry them around empty and they are no weight. And if I need um, additional liters, I just put the nine liters there. So in total, I'm not having um, 16, but I'm having 25 actually, which of course makes a big difference. And um, yeah, and I get along with that very well. I don't think you need the more than that. Um, so one of these regions was Mauritania. Another region was uh, between... Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan on my world trip, there was like a thousand kilometers without any gas stations. And actually now um, in Oman, we went to the Hub Al Khali desert, which is as well called the empty quarters. And um, there was like a gas station and we knew there would not be um, that much else after that. And um, we bought a little canister there too with 10 liters because um, we knew that it could be necessary. So whenever I know that I go to these regions where you might need more, I just would carry canisters and I think it's a very good idea. I would always prefer that than putting on one of these safari tanks, tanks that are just much more heavy in weight. And really everywhere else in the world, I have never, never used a bigger tank. Um, so I really don't understand this craziness about the tank volumes and people always saying like, oh, I don't have enough reach with, um, yeah, with this kind of tank. And I don't know how you're seeing that. Um, I guess, yeah, I mean, it's very convenient to have a bigger tent and tank. I agree on that. Um, when I rode like with the GS Adventure that has a very, very big tank, um, on the Expedition North series, it's of course very nice that you don't need to um, head to uh, petrol stations that often. But is it necessary? I don't think so. Um, someone is asking, are you a good skier? That's a bit off topic. Are you a good skier? Do you go every year? Have you ever tried snowboarding? I try to ski every year because I'm living close to the Alps. So it's basically, I mean, I can step out of the door and it only takes me half an hour to go to the next skiing area. Um, that's the great things about um, living in Switzerland or um, as well in Munich in Germany, where I lived before skiing was very close to. So I skied since I was three, year, three years old. I suppose snowboarded then. And, um, but these days I only ski anymore. Um, someone is asking how many kilometers has the Tenere um, since 2019? Yeah, it is from 2019. Actually, I'm still, um, I still love this Tenere, the Fox. Um, it was one of the first tenaries um, that was here on the European market when it came out. And um, I actually don't know how much it meanwhile has. I think not that much more because the only journeys I did with it was the West Africa journey. And then last year I did the um, Destination Home series with it. And North Cape I didn't do with it. So I think it doesn't have that many kilometers on it yet. But I have actually no clue. <laughs> have you ever thought about Australia for traveling with a motorcycle? I actually have been in Australia um, on my world trip and I loved it. Um, I actually didn't expect that I would like it that much, but I did. And um, I went from Sydney to Melbourne, Great Ocean Road, and then I went to Tasmania, Tassie, which I think it's a fantastic destination. I would like to come back to Australia and do a little bit more like a trip through the country. I as well would like to go to New, um, New Zealand at one point. That's still on my destination list, but it's really very, very far from Europe. So um, I think you just have to be willing to take these long flights. I don't um, necessarily enjoy flying. So whenever I have to sit like long um, in the airplane, I'm, I really think about if I should do that. Um, what about touring the US, um, this time Eastern US? I actually think that might be something I might do very soon. So um, stay tuned for that. But first, um, the Oman series. 
would you go to Ukraine after the war? Of course, um, I really like basically all um, the Eastern European country. I think it's very great places to travel to. I hope there will be something left of Ukraine after the war. Um, I really hope so. And um, I really hope that we can enjoy this lovely country at one point again too. How does itinerary get to Oman? Um, I said it in the beginning. Um, it was, I rented one. I didn't, it was not my own. You will see it because it's very funny. It looks exactly um, like my own. I have one last question. We already so long, one hour already in. Um, I could talk to you guys forever, but maybe we have to end this soon. Um, I have one last question that I want to read out, read out, which is the importance of your YouTube channel in your life. How did you get into posting videos? What are your special hopes, expectations and plans with it? Um, I hope that this channel will always be a place for overlanding, um, no matter in which kind, because I as well really um, enjoy making videos, whatever. I as well enjoyed making the videos about skiing and I post every year. I as well enjoyed making the short videos that I did from Mexico um, last year where I traveled a bit with a car, but um, I hope this, this channel can always be a place to inspire you um, to go to new travel destinations. I think what is as well important to me is that to show you guys that the destinations that I'm going to, they're accessible for everyone. I'm not a crazy person and I don't do necessarily crazy stuff. So um, everything that I do is kind of like safe to do for you as well. So that's what I want to do with the channel. I want to inspire you guys and um, everybody out there to maybe as well go on the one or other trip and to get some inspiration for um, new travel destinations. And um, yeah, how did I get into posting videos? I don't know who of you guys has been here from the beginning. Um, maybe you drop a message here um, in the chat if you have watched from the beginning of my YouTube career and um, I actually founded this channel. I mean, it exists since I started on my trip around the world, but I never posted. So there was nothing on it uh, besides of one video. And um, then when Corona came, I actually, I told you before, I'm self-employed. So I really struggled in the beginning because lots of um, the things that I wanted to do and um, lots of the jobs that I had were canceled. And all of a sudden, I had much more time than I expected. Um, so I thought, what can I do with this time? And can I learn something new? And can I try something new? And then I decided to uh, edit the first videos for YouTube. And um, who has been there from the beginning knows that this first videos that I edited, they were actually, I mean, I still love them. I think they are some of the best videos that I did from this West Africa journey that I did. But um, I didn't film for YouTube. I only filmed for Instagram stories, which means that many, many, many of the videos were in a completely wrong format. So they were like, I mean, they were like, you know, mobile phone format. So like this and not like this. And um, well, I had to edit these videos and they were kind of like poor quality. And um, I was really learning. It was a steep learning curve, I think, with the editing. But I'm still very proud of them. And I think they're still some of the best. I love them. Um, if you want to see some of them, I think Mauritania is a great video. I also think Sierra Leone, um, TY Island is a very great video. Um, the ones of you who watched it might remember Captain Mustafa, absolutely great guy. Um, I can highly recommend to maybe scroll back and um, <laughs> watch these videos. I think they're so much fun. And yeah, I, then I just stick to it. Um, so I started during the Corona time, which is now basically, I think more or less, I think I started in June, actually, um, 2020. So in June, it will be two years and um, then it just started to be fun. And on the next journey, on this destination north journey, I then started to film really for YouTube, um, which of course made a big change in 
quality and but i was still i mean i'm still learning you always learn and um yeah so i just continued and posted basically each week i think there were only like a few weeks in the last two years where there was coming no video and that was it that was how this channel started and um i think this is maybe a good time to end this video as well with the start of this channel i had a lot of fun with you guys if you have any more suggestions what we should do for the hundred thousand um let me know and otherwise i think it will not be too long until i see you again i think the oman series i don't know how many episodes it will be in total but the best episode i think will be the one that is next week and then so the next week is a more like a summary and then i will like get into the more details with the more blogging style episodes but i think there are so many great episodes i i don't want to spoil too much but um we camped in the desert there was like a scorp scorpio involved um i did some crazy off-road where i nearly thought i gonna die because it was so steep uh, we met super friendly locals a lot of donkeys and sheep and goats and i think it might be like around 10 episodes from oman and i guess after that we will see each other again in a live chat and i hope you guys enjoyed this um Cheers to all of you. Thank you for jo joining um, the channel. Thank you for joining the journey always. And thank you all for being such a nice community. I think it's really unbelievable and the nicest like social media community that I have on all my channels because people are really very nice to each other and helpful and um, kind of involved. I, really enjoy it um, to communicate with you guys when i was in oman i didn't have like wi-fi for quite some days and i think you guys realized that too because i didn't answer like usually to the questions so there was like a lot of questions under the videos and the comments and the video went online and i couldn't post anything because i was really having no connection whatsoever and um, then after like two weeks, I was like, oh, I miss the YouTube community. I'm happy to be back and um, to be able to comment. Yeah. So thank you guys for joining and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Got to go.